really pleased to welcome uh, Villa Parkinen from Open Text uh, to the stage. If you'd like to come on, Villa, thank you very much indeed. And I'll leave you to introduce your company and what you can do. All right. Oh. Thank you so much for the introduction, Tim, and uh, glad to be here. And glad to see so many of you coming into the session today. I know that we're getting to the tail end of the uh, of the two days here, so I uh, really appreciate you coming over and having a chat with me around supply chain visibility. Uh, so uh, as Tim said, uh, I represent OpenText. We're an information management company. We help companies to digitize their supply chain processes. Uh, I myself am a uh, director of product marketing, so work co very closely with uh, market research, with our product management and so on. And these are some of the perspectives that I, I want to share with you today. So we're talking about supply chain visibility. Uh, as you can imagine, we're going to do that more from a technology perspective. And uh, really, I want to talk about uh, specifically around this shift in uh, almost thinking. So we, we have 20 minutes, so it's going to be a high-level uh, presentation. So I want to focus on this shift from thinking around, let's say, more traditional visibility around control towers and a more new, newer concept around command centers. And really, um, to get started, I think it's important to acknowledge what's driving change in this market. So, um, And this is really the key topic of any supply chain conference over the past several years. Uh, so the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity that we have in the environment that is causing us to um, make those decisions of what should we do. Should we go left? Should we go right? Not in a political sense. Uh, should we continue on the path that we're on? Should we stay put? If we stay put, what's the risk in that? Because not doing anything is probably a bigger risk than doing something. Um, so this is really what's driving a lot of these things. And uh, in this world, there's one word that has really characterized the conversation. We're slightly maybe getting into newer words driven by the analyst, let's say, that they want to come up with something new. But really that word uh, has been resiliency. So how do we build resiliency into our businesses? And if you think back to the beginning of pandemic, everybody wanted to be resilient at any cost. And then after a while, they realized that actually supply chain cost optimization. We can't really do that at any cost. We need to be cost conscious. Um, but really, the resiliency has been the key thing. And there's a really great, um, simple and elegant uh, definition that is used by an IDC analyst called Simon Ellis, who, who we work closely with. And he defines resiliency being a combination of visibility, insight, and agility. So basically, being able to see what's going on, being able to understand what does that mean, and then being able to act on that. So. Um, in this presentation, we're mostly focusing on the first two things. So visibility, how do we see what's going on inside? How do we understand that in the context of our business? Agility, to some degree, yes. Uh, a lot of that has to do with organizational capabilities and how quickly you're able to move as an organization. But this is sort of the focus for us today. Um, I have good news and bad news about this. So the good news is that you know that this is important <laughs> from all the conferences and everything that we've seen over the past few years. Organizations are really investing in resiliency. Um, and in doing that, they understand that data sharing and communication is, is the number one thing that's going to help us to be more resilient as a business. Um, I should have also mentioned that again, the, the, some of the newer words that you hear nowadays in lieu of resiliency might be something like anti-fragility, which is a very new thing, very much discussed at the Gartner conference. So how do we not only withstand what's being thrown at us, but how do we actually turn that to our strength and come out better than we would have done without disruption? Uh, so I'll let you be the judges of uh, how much that makes sense. I, I do think that it, there's a great, great idea behind that, but I think resiliency may, may still be uh, maybe the more sensible way of doing or thinking about things. Um, if you look at investment priorities, these are numbers from a study uh, uh, done by Reuters Events earlier this year. Um, top three, supply chain monitoring, tracking, uh, visibility, uh, analytics, forecasting, these are all about supply chain visibility. And again, how do we create that resiliency through better understanding what's going on in our business? Um, so this is the good news. Again, we understand that this is important. The bad news is that we don't necessarily, we haven't really seen the results that we'd like to see. Um, one study by PwC uh, says that almost 70% of operations and supply chain officers say that um, they haven't really seen the expected results. So yeah, we've seen some results, but wasn't really what we expected. And on the other hand, from that same Reuters study earlier in this year, um, you know, we don't really believe that what we have planned is actually what, what's going to get us there. So there's this sort of um, 
disillusionment maybe around the technologies around supply chain visibility that we're seeing. It's interesting, these are again, numbers from this year. Uh, there was a study by Gartner around CFOs two years ago, and they were saying the same thing. So I think that's trickled from the financial side of things and <laughs> come to the business side as well, that actually we need to see some change uh, in how we approach these things. So again, very complex topic, uh, a lot of uh, factors ultimately uh, specific to your business, uh, but some general observations on what might be the cause behind this. I have three points that I want to make. Uh, the first one is availability of data. So this is a very anecdotal data point, again, from Gartner sources. You can kind of see that at the bottom of the slide. But according to them, specifically around risk management in supply chains, less than half of the relevant processes are digitized. So if you have data and you're analyzing that, you're analyzing half of what's actually going on. So that, that might be a problem if that skews your per perception. So digitization of processes and actually getting information from what's going on, that's one, one problem. The second problem is access to data. So even if you do have the data, is it available to all the people that need it? Uh, so we tend to have this lack of cross-functional visibility. So we're really good at uh, creating specific visibility in silos but not necessarily sharing that information in the organization. So that's a, that's a second point. And then the third one, which I think we've d discussed in some of the other presentations here as well, is the quality of that data. So even if we have the data, we have access to the data, can we trust the data? So that's, that's kind of the third, third point. And I love this um, quote. Uh, I can't remember where I saw that, but it really resonated with me. So th there is this data management term that I'm sure all of you have heard, garbage in, garbage out. Now with AI, it seems to be more like garbage in, garbage everywhere because it gets proliferated by the AI algorithms and you don't quite know, you can't trace where <laughs> the errors have, have gone. So, so there's a real danger in actually um, being splendid at scaling faulty uh, anal analysis with AI. So there, it's, it's a real danger that organizations are facing. So ultimately, the conclusion is that at the approach, and again, I'm looking at this more from the technology point of view, but our approach needs to change. And on a very, very high level that, that I want to focus on today is that the traditional way of looking at things has been the way of the control tower. Uh, the thing with control towers is that they tend to be focused on functions, so logistics control tower. Maybe you don't call it control tower, but you have separate analytic solutions in procurement, separate maybe even in sourcing, customer fulfillment. Everyone has their own data sets, and then whenever we need to collaborate, it's whose Excel is correct or whose data set is correct. Uh, that's the collaboration conversation. So whatever you call that, we call it a command center. Whatever you call it, um, there needs to be a change in, in enabling uh, the organization to leverage its data in a uniform way. So really facilitating that, first of all, cross-functional collaboration, but then also then looking at the ecosystem and the partners that we have. So sharing data and increasing transparency in our, in our business processes. So this is really the shift that we're talking about. And if we look at the capabilities or what this means, this is again Gartner Materials going back a couple of years when they defined this, so it's a nice graph from them. Um, control Tower, as I said, is very much functionally focused. Uh, it's focused on what you could call it reading the news. Uh, and the idea around Command Center is that it's focused on cross-functional collaboration, so sharing the data more uh, freely within the organization, also with the, with the business partners, uh, and then driving action from that data. So this is really the, the differentiating factor. And like with everything, it's a stepping stone into what still being called a broader ambition of end-to-end -end supply chain visibility. I'd love to see us get there. I don't quite see how that everything everywhere in the supply chain visibility, uh, we can work towards that, but I think it is uh, remains an ambition, I would say, uh, for quite some time to come. Uh, some of the key things uh, in the command center, so what are the essential components that we need? This is the list, again, very high level, uh, but you need to have what Gartner calls digital supply chain twin. So ability to digitally represent uh, your supply chain activities and the physical, act physical um, assets and, and so on in the supply chain so that you can actually analyze them. Second of all, you need a data hub, so a centralized place where that data gets put so that you can actually analyze and share it in, in one place. Uh, development libraries, obviously, if you want to run um, more advanced analytics, so you need to be able to develop the algorithms and really do that data science piece of things. Uh, insights is how do you deliver uh, the visibility to the users, how, you, how do you visualize the data and make sure that the users don't get bombarded with notifications on things that are not really relevant for them. 
so how do we actually optimize that user experience? And then finally, integration, which is really uh, very much core to what we do as a business. So how do you actually get the data from the silos that it today exists, and how do you bring that over to the centralized data hub uh, to really power that that whole digital twin and the, and the analytics? And uh, really, uh, what I want to focus on here, I want to share a few thoughts on the first two of these. So the digital supply chain twin and the data hub, because I think these are kind of the essential components and then, yeah, the others are important as well, but this is really what I wanted to focus on. So sharing a few thoughts uh, from my perspective on what the thinking behind these two, these two topics is. So the first of all, uh, digital supply chain twin. Uh, it's basically, as I said, being able to digitally represent what's going on in your supply chain. So we take an example of a very basic order to cash process. Uh, starts with someone places an order. Uh, there's an order response from the supplier. Yes, we can deliver that or no, we can't or we can confirm that in part. Uh, there might be a change order. Uh, there might be another response on, okay, how do we respond to the or a changed order? At some point, goods get shipped. Uh, they are received, uh, they get invoiced, and the invoice gets paid. And this is kind of the uh, process. And what you do in terms of the digital twin is you store this information along with the other information in the command center, and then you can then uh, extra extrapolate that or kind of look at that, use the data, data footprint of the supply chain to understand what's going on in the physical supply chain. Uh, because when you place an order, uh, that obviously the supplier has to check the inventory like or Hope, hopefully wishful inventory, like can we actually de deliver that within the, uh, within the constraints, um, uh, uh, constraints uh, uh, that, that are in the order. Uh, there's a, when there's a shipment dispatch, there's actually stuff leaving from the warehouse, gets delivered and it ends up in the inventory with the buyer. Um, the other side of the coin uh, that I think, again, it's more in the name of the cross-functional collaboration is that these also, the same supply chain events also impact your financial supply chain. So what's the financial position of the organization? When you place an order, uh, you are committing to buying something. Uh, when you get an invoice, you have an open purchase invoice that needs to get paid within the payment terms. And after some point, money leaves your account. So there are uh, activities going on on the financial side that are tied to these um, tied to the physical or and the digital supply chain events and the data, and you can, you can uh, gauge these. And uh, the digital twin is really not only collecting this data, but then also being able to model that and run simulations, run scenarios against that. So this is really where we get into the more advanced stuff. So how do we actually leverage the data? It's in one place. Uh, so how do we then leverage that and, and gain the visibility? So this is one way of thinking about it, again, operating across these three levels. Uh, anchored in that data, so how do we get the data in the first place, and then how do we use the data to understand really what's going on in the physical world and then also in the financial position. The second point uh, around uh, the um, data hub, so Central's data hub, uh, I wanted to focus on this sort of uh, difference in thinking, like the traditional thinking around analytics, uh, which I'm calling here more application-centric, and then uh, what is more data-centric approach that would be represented by the command center. So uh, in the traditional way, uh, world, you have your own business applications that are usually uh, the source of the analytics, or you can, you can see what's going on in the business. Logistics have their own TMS systems. Manufacturing might have the MES system. Customer fulfillment may use CRM. You may have sourcing, sourcing and procurement using <laughs> their own applications, e-procurement platforms, other solutions. Might be multiple applications at play. They might be part of a, the same ERP suite. They might be separate applications. And the way you synchronize data is building integrations between these. And obviously, if you ask any CIO what they want, what they think of integrations, hate them, want to get rid of each and every one of them as much as I can, <laughs> because they, they are expensive, they create all kinds of problems, but they're needed to keep, our, keep us organized, keep business process running. You still need the applications to actually execute on the business processes. Um, but for the analytics purposes, um, what the command center represent, it's more this data-centric thinking. So again, you have the centralized data hub where you're collecting information, and then you're surfacing that information for the different functions. It's still the same data pool, but you're exposing it to different roles based on their interests. So you don't have the uh, discrepancies between data, so you don't have to fight whose data is correct because everyone's looking at the same data. They're just looking at their view of that, which needs to be very customizable because again, people in manufacturing are interested in very different things than in sourcing and procurement, um, but it still needs to have that common, common element. So again, very high level stuff, but this is sort of the, the difference in traditional thinking and the thinking that command centers and the, the data hub there that, that it 
it represents. So uh, getting closer to the end of my presentation, obviously we are working on our version of what this might look like anchored on a connect, uh, co common uh, data platform. Um, are really the design principles behind this. I'm not going to go into too much details on this. We can we can chat about that later on. But really, our thinking is that it needs to be uh, flexible to the organizations, and there needs to be flexibility in choosing how you want to surface it to your users. Maybe it's your own already data lake that you have, and you just ingest the data there and do centralized analytics there. Or maybe it is through uh, specific monitors, maybe it's customized monitors. So the flexibility is really the key thing in our thinking behind this, because we are traditionally moving the data, so again, integrations, moving data, digitizing processes, and now it's all about how do we leverage that data, in-flight data, to understand what's going on in the supply chain and then surface that to the users. So this is our, our approach. And uh, before getting to the questions portion uh, of the session, I do want to share some use cases on how one might get started. So what might be the focus areas that kick off these conversations in organizations? Because oftentimes, whenever I'm you know, speaking with people at conferences, um, and particularly tends to be anal analyst-led sessions, like, great, love the content, don't know where to start. Like that, that's usually the usually like okay, that's that's too big. Like uh, there's that's boiling the ocean. Like I can't do that. So uh, some of the starting points might be, again, if you have less than half of the process digitized, might be a smart place to look at. And maybe you want to look at purchase to pay or order to cash. Maybe one of them could be the starting point and cascade from there, looking at the process digitization. Maybe you want to focus on specific use cases around collaboration. Maybe it's around better tracking performance of your suppliers. Maybe it's better tracking performance of internal business units in fulfilling orders to customers. Uh, maybe it's around supplier risk monitoring. Maybe that's that's the focus area that you want to get started, collect the data, and, and really better understand the risk exposure of the organization in the business context. Uh, or maybe you want to look at more the physical world. So maybe we want to focus on product traceability, uniquely identifying our products, combat uh, theft in supply chain, these kinds of things. So these are all part of the digital twin and use cases for a command center. Um, asset tracking being another example, and shipment tracking, of course. Um, the point is really, and I think this was mentioned in the keynote yesterday, it, it, sh it should be thinking big and strategically, but then focusing on where's the ROI. Because with modern technology, you can do anything, but it's really the challenge is how, how do we do things that add value to our business and how, how do we get to that ROI, which is, again, thinking back to the challenges we're not really seeing. So we thought a solution was going to solve all the problems, and yes, yeah, it's something, but not quite what we expected. So that, that's really an important point to, to keep in mind. So this is really the uh, all the material that I had prepared. Uh, I think we have uh, some time here for questions. Yeah, so that would be brilliant. Yeah. A brilliant measure of how uh, engaging the presentation is and how important the information is by the number of cameras that go off, taking pictures of the slides and, and, and recording of what you got to say. Uh, that was that was amazing. Thank you, Vinny. Any questions from the room at all uh, on that? Uh, great. Uh, we've got a microphone running down. We love microphones, don't we? Yeah. Hello, thank you for all the content you provided. Uh, they are all valuable. I want to ask, uh, as you mentioned, all the departments are scattered and they are not kind of talking to each other. And I think for these two days, we know that supply chain is end to end. And this is what you provide to them, right? To gather everyone in, in one place. I want to know as a product marketing department, um, who do you approach? Uh, actually, when you think about all different departments, who is your decision maker and how you communicate with them as open text? Yeah, so usually if, if I look at our communications with our customers, so we collaborate very closely if we look at our existing customers. Uh, we probably start from the IT department, you know, the actual team who handles the integration that day to day supports the business from that side. And then really it's, it's two, two sources. It, it can be either ordered cash, usually that's a separate team. Who, who looks at things. So how do we uh, service our customers in the best way possible and digitize processes there? And then the com communication around suppliers tends to be another conversation. So it's very rare that we talk about those two at the same time. But um, sourcing procurement and then customer order fulfillment, kind of that sales and marketing side of things. So those tend to be the, the focus areas for us. Sometimes it, it kind of gets into other parts of the business, but that tends to be for us the, the places to start. It's really looking at the existing processes, either towards customers or towards suppliers. Thank you. Another, any questions at all? No, we're good. One thing I wanted to check, and I hope I know the answer to the question, 
I'm assuming that, that what you describe has got to be uh, an, an evolution rather than a revolution. A, bi a big bang is, is, is simply not going to work. Yeah, yeah, that, that is ex exactly right. So yeah, even though we're thinking, like, rethinking the whole thing, let's start from scratch. It sounds very appealing because everybody might be frustrated with a lot of things in their supply chains, but ultimately we, we just can't rip out stuff that we're doing today and completely replace them. It has to be, again, looking at the ROI, I think that's where I would anchor that. So if there is ROI in taking some element of what we do today, completely replacing that, then it makes sense. But yeah, it's unlikely that you're just going to drop everything and it's just going to completely reinvent things. And I, and I guess everybody in the room and, 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 and online, uh, they all want the nirvana of <laughs> visibility down the supply chain. The reality is that never happens. So from your perspective, what do you plump for and how do you know you've, you, you've, you've plumped for the right tools, the right, the right uh, strategy? It starts from the business problems. So I think what are the problems that we have that are worth solving? And then again, boring, but it comes back to the ROI here as well. Okay. But it is speaking with actually people who are performing the processes, who are actually on the ground doing things and what's really holding them back and then kind of think starting from there because we don't want to do things that don't add value like sure. that's just yeah almost a definition of stupidity but uh <laughs> i guess in the supply chain it might be uh but yeah so the, it, it was, yeah that's where the start is where where are the problems for the business and what are these problems worth solving for our business because they might be different um obviously we work with companies in multiple industries uh, so it's very different looking at a retail retail supply chain than a supply chain for an industrial manufacturer or a logistics provider. Like they they all have different uh, business processes. Sure. But then even between organizations in the same industry, your business strategy is going to influence. Like what's important for you? If you're a cost leader, you're probably going to value different things than if you are a premium brand or premium provider. So again, it it has to go back to what's valuable for the business and and building it from there. Cool. Thank you, Ville. It's been brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, if you need to know more, want to find out more, your stand open text is, is over yes, there for those there. of us here in London or, or simply make contact online for our colleagues watching uh, around the world. Thank you very much indeed, Ville. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. That was great.